we have to feel to heal. Think about that. Like, really think about it. We have an instinctual need to stop any uncomfortable emotion we feel dead in its tracks. But what happens after you do that? How do you feel? Do you feel ashamed for feeling that feeling in the first place? Hey, I'm Savvy and this is Beautifully Broken, a platform I started for mental health and sobriety to give advice, tools, and guidance based on my own experiences. So this video is part one of my three-part series called Mindful Emotions. So make sure you hit the bell notification and that you're subscribed so you know when I upload parts two and three. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some steps and questions that I have learned over the years that I ask myself and go through anytime any uncomfortable or crazy emotions kind of start bubbling to the surface. So the other night, my sister and I were talking, just talking how as sisters do, venting and telling me about her life and some crazy things that she's going through right now. But as she was talking, and as I was trying to slowly encourage her to feel her feelings, she eventually just kind of had enough and got frustrated with me and stopped and just looked me dead in the eyes and went, Savvy, how the hell do I actually deal with my emotions? So when she said that, a light bulb kind of went off in my head and stopped me dead in my tracks. And I kind of thought and I stopped and I went, you know what? How many of us actually don't know how to deal with our emotions? Seriously. We just think that if we ignore them, or we push them off to the side, that they're just going to go away. I mean, some of us even go so far to bury them six feet under, hoping and wishing they don't crawl back up to the surface like a zombie, right? Society has painted this light that having no emotion and being emotionless and not showing your emotions means that you're confident and sexy. Well, let me burst your bubble here. Hiding your emotions and stuffing them deep down doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't make you look more confident. In fact, it just makes you look emotionless. So I want you to walk with me on this journey before I walk you through the steps. Think of your mind as a house. It's warm, it's safe, it's cozy, it's clean, it's organized. It's whatever you imagine your safe, perfect house to look like. Then suddenly, a super uncomfortable emotion comes knocking on your door. Now, our immediate reaction is to freeze in fear and then go run and look through the window, peer through the blinds, and see who it is. And before we even try to give that emotion a chance, we prejudge it. We prejudge it and we just think we're going to shut it out instead of trying to open the door and greet them and see what they have to offer. So, here are the steps and questions that I have come up with that help me anytime that happens. So the first step is to just acknowledge your emotions. It's pretty simple. You don't need to do anything crazy or complicated. You can write it down, you can say it out loud, you can say it in your head. Just by naming your emotions, you've done the biggest step. Instead of saying you're fine, we all know what that actually means. Or saying that you feel kind of weird, you can actually place it to a word that your brain recognizes so it's a little bit more comfortable. The second step, go through each one of the emotions and ask yourself why you're feeling that emotion. You may not know why you're feeling it right away. Sometimes we don't really know the key answer, but that's okay. You don't need to have the answers. But it could be something really, really simple. You could be mad and all of a sudden you stop and you ask yourself, okay, well, why am I mad? Think to what triggered you to become upset. And then that will just start a healthy series of thoughts for you to process exactly why you reacted the way you did. Now that you've placed a why behind your emotions, this will start to ease you into how you're feeling even more. And the third one is now that you know the why, think of an action that you can take towards that why. Another example would be you're upset and mad because one of your friends said something to upset you. Is there an action you can take towards that? Can you gently confront them and maybe set a healthy boundary? Not all the time are we going to have an answer for every given situation. We're not always going to have an action to the why. And that's okay. If that's the case, then it's out of your control. And if it's out of your control, 
and it's just your job to focus on yourself in the moment instead of trying to change a circumstance that you can't control. The fourth step is have some outlet to let out your emotion. Now that you know what it is, and you know how you're feeling, how can you let it out? For me, it's going to the gym, it's writing, even sometimes if I'm really pissed off, taking a pillow and screaming into it. It works, trust me. The fifth step, once you've let out that emotion to some degree, can you do something that will actually make you feel better? Something healthy. Go for a walk, take a bath, talk to a friend. If you walk through these steps mentally, it'll at least help you process your emotions to some degree instead of avoiding them. Most of the time, you'll figure out that if you're feeling a certain emotion in a certain situation, it's normal. I mean, if you get anxious because you have to give a speech, that's a normal reaction. So before you make the mistake of self-diagnosing, make sure you understand why you're feeling a certain emotion first. I encourage you to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable because those are the moments when we actually start to heal. Our emotions are the maps to us understanding our minds. So stop avoiding them and start dealing with them. We have to feel to heal. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the bell notification so you know when part two is up for this video. Share, comment, let me know below if any of these work for you and how it went for you. Thanks and I will see you guys next week.